Reincarnation is an ancient belief that has appeared all over the world for thousands of years. In this video, we're going to look at some of the incredible and convincing scientific evidence that reincarnation is actually a real phenomenon. And if you have a hard time believing that, keep watching because I'm going to share three cases that have been well documented of individuals who remember a past lifetime with such specific and accurate and precise detail that it defies all explanation. I'm really excited for this video because not only is this a fascinating topic, but the implications here are potentially so massive that this could revolutionize our entire science of consciousness, the cosmos, and the nature of reality. Welcome back to Cosmic Consciousness. My name is Jonas, and here on this channel, I'm on a mission to explore the mysteries that open our minds and the wisdom that opens our hearts. Now, the scientific evidence for reincarnation, again, is just an incredibly interesting topic that I've discussed in previous videos. Did you know that there's actually an entire field of scientific research into this topic of reincarnation? Over 50 years of modern research has documented thousands of individuals around the world who report specific and detailed memories of past lifetimes. At the University of Virginia, the Department of Perceptual Studies is an entire research institute dedicated to investigating this topic. It was founded in 1967 by Dr. Ian Stevenson to begin researching past life memories. For 40 years, Dr. Stevenson traveled around the world and documented cases of young children who, from the time they could speak, described vivid memories of past lifetimes. What's so amazing about this is that many of these children report such specific and detailed information about their past lifetime, including their name, where they lived, their family members, their occupation, the way that they died, that they can be confidently matched up to a real person who really lived and died. Today this research continues on, so let's dive into three astonishing cases of reincarnation and past life memories. The story of James Leininger is one of the most famous cases that's been thoroughly documented in the scientific literature. James was a child from Louisiana who at the age of two began having frequent and intense nightmares of a plane crash. From the time he could talk, James spoke about being an airplane pilot who was shot down and killed by the Japanese. He drew hundreds of battle scenes involving planes, and what's truly amazing about this case is that young James knew specific information about World War II, about airplanes, about the American operation in Japan before he could even read or write. James claimed that he flew a plane called a Corsair, which indeed was a fighter plane that was used during World War II. But it gets even more astonishing because when James was just two and a half years old, he told his parents that he had flown his plane off of a boat. When his parents asked him the name of the boat, he said, Natoma. He also identified Iwo Jima, an island off the coast of Japan, as the place where his plane was shot down. James also said that his name in his past life happened to be James as well. After these conversations, James' father did some research and discovered, amazingly enough, that the USS Natoma Bay was in fact an aircraft carrier involved in the Iwo Jima operation during World War II. Records showed that one pilot named James Houston was the only pilot from the Natoma Bay killed during the Iwo Jima operation, exactly as young James had described. James' parents also asked him if there was anyone else on the Natoma who he remembered, and he gave the name of Jack Larson, and once again, amazingly enough, records showed that Jack Larson was a co-pilot and a good friend of James Houston, who was shot down and killed in Iwo Jima. This case is just truly remarkable. I mean, how can we explain a young child from the age of two knowing all this accurate historical information about World War II, about uh, life on the USS Natoma, about airplanes, about the Iwo Jima operation, before he could read and write? 
where is he getting this information from? I think it's kind of ridiculous to claim that it's all just chance or coincidence, so this demands some sort of explanation here, right? On the face of it, it seems that the most obvious explanation is that young James did in fact experience a past lifetime as James Houston, who was shot and killed in Iwo Jima, and then carried over fragments of memories into a new lifetime. The second case involves a woman named Jenny Cockle from England, who as an adult published multiple books about her experience of investigating her past life memories. When she was only three years old, young Jenny began speaking of a past lifetime that she had lived, and she made specific claims. She said that her past name was Mary, that she had lived in Ireland in a small country home near a stream and grew potatoes. Jenny vividly remembered the details around her death. She remembered being a young woman in her 30s who died after giving birth to her eighth child, and she felt incredible guilt and sadness about leaving behind her eight children. As a child, Jenny was able to draw maps from memory of the area in which Mary had lived, and she had a strong sense that it was in Ireland and was repeatedly drawn to a town named Malahide. Here's where it gets even more incredible because Jenny was actually able to match up the map that she had drawn from memory to a real map of the town of Malahide, which finally convinced her to go to this town in Ireland and visit for herself. When she arrived in Malahide, Jenny somehow knew her way around town and instantly recognized numerous places despite never having been there before. While she was in Malahide, Jenny was able to locate the place where she claimed to have lived in her past lifetime. She learned that an individual named Mary Sutton did in fact live in this home who, get this, died after giving birth to her eighth child in the 1930s. After confirming these details, Jenny was actually able to arrange a reunion with all of the Sutton children, and she gave precise information about their childhood home, about which rooms they stayed in, about their family history, that did ultimately convince these children that Jenny Cockle was indeed the reincarnation of their mother, Mary Sutton. This entire story is detailed even further in Jenny Cockle's book called Across Time and Death, A Mother's Search for Her Past Life Children. The third case is of a young girl from Sri Lanka named Purnima Ekanyake. In 1990, when Purnima was three years old, she began speaking about her past lifetime as an incense maker. Purnima stated that she was struck and killed by a big car while riding her bicycle to the market. Young Purnima gave a list of specific details about her past lifetime. Not only did she claim to work as an incense maker, she actually knew specific brands of incense that she sold. She stated that she was a man who was married to a woman named Kasumi and later had a second wife. Her mother's name was Simona and she had two younger brothers. She actually knew the name of the elementary school where she attended called the Rahula School and said she only studied up to the fifth grade. Purnima was actually able to locate the place where she had lived her previous lifetime because even though it was dozens of miles away from where she presently lived, it was located near to a famous temple. This led Purnima's family to investigate further and they did discover that an incense maker had died in this remote area after being hit by a bus while riding his bicycle. The man was well known in the area because he was the owner of an incense factory named Jindasa. And at this point, Purnima's family went to this area to visit Jindasa's family. When they brought young Purnima to visit this group of strangers, she was able to identify Jindasa's mother and brother by name. She asked about Jindasa's friends. She knew numerous intimate details of the family history. She even knew that Jindasa had a second wife, which was a family secret that supposedly no one knew about. 
Records showed that when Jindasa died, the bus struck him across the chest, breaking his ribs and puncturing his lungs on the left side. And it just so happened that Purnima had a large cluster of birthmarks in the exact same location of this injury. Incredibly enough, these kind of birthmarks are not uncommon in children who claim to have past life memories. The birthmarks almost always correspond with the wounds the child claims to have died from, which is just another incredible aspect to this, to this whole mystery of past life memories. So there you have it, three convincing cases of past life memories and reincarnation. How can we explain this bizarre phenomenon of young children from the time they can speak, describing all of these obscure and specific and accurate details of a real person who really lived and died. Please share your thoughts in the comments section down below. I'd be really curious to hear what you think. It is mind blowing to consider that there are thousands and thousands of these cases from all over the world that have been well documented in the literature. The combined weight of the evidence is so great that it's ridiculous to say that, that this is all just some chance or coincidence or hoax. There's something real to this phenomenon. This could be one of the most significant bodies of scientific research that no one is talking about because it doesn't fit in with our existing scientific paradigm of materialism. The idea that there's no consciousness beyond the brain, that the afterlife doesn't exist, and that there's nothing beyond the physical. But as I've discussed for several years now here on this channel, there are mountains and mountains of evidence from quantum physics to mysticism to shamanism to psychedelics to the near-death experience, remote viewing, reincarnation, and on and on and on that suggests that there is so much more to this mystery of self, the mystery of consciousness, than anything we've even begun to discover. And as we ponder all of these big life questions, it's worth remembering that quite possibly the greatest mystery in all of existence is not out there somewhere in the universe, but within, in the very core of our being. Thank you so much, as always, for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please visit me on Patreon, where you can support me in making videos just like this one. Appreciate you all so very much. Thank you, thank you. I'll see you back here very soon.